Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now first thing is most certainly first, if you wouldn't mind giving me a like and a subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And whilst you're there, remember to let me know how you're doing out of 10 because for me this week, I'm going to say that I'm like a six, six and a half, something like that, because this week has been packed to the rafters with things going so unbelievably wrong um, that it's just crazy. But we have had one high, uh, so, you know, swings and roundabouts, I suppose, but uh, yeah, very heavy on the low end. So the first low is on Monday morning. I was getting ready to for TB testing, sorting out the cattle crush and that to take it over to Thornton. And I went in the barn because I took the weigh scales off of the cattle crush and I found a little owl, um, the breed, not a small owl. So the little owl breed, only a little thing like this. Juvenile one, bit of a fluffy head, but mostly feathered. Um, he scurried across the floor and I thought something's not right with him. So we, we gathered him up and dad took him to the animal hospital. And turned out he got a really badly broken wing and um, unfortunately they had to put him down, which was kind of annoying because we have a lot of little owls around the yard. They're really cool, uh, love seeing them around. So it was a bit sad because we knew that we were nesting. Um, yeah, it's sad just to see that one not quite make it all the way through. So that started the week off badly and it just got worse from there. Then on Wednesday, we had a letter from the APHA telling us that they were using the severe interpretation of the rules on the uh, inconclusive reactor that we had last week, meaning that we are now back down with TB. So realistically, the earliest that we are gonna get out of TB now is Christmas, which is, uh, yeah, really annoying because we've not even finished this TB test and we're already back to square one. So yeah, that was annoying as well. And to top it all off, Yesterday, we decided to get Lewis in because it's bull shuffling week. So if you don't know, we actually rotate our bulls around every three weeks um, in order to make sure that they go in every group and every group gets covered by every bull. It's how we do it at the minute. We're going to change that in the future, but that's what we do at the moment. And um, we got Lewis in to take him to Thornton with us today. We're going to bring Paul back from Thornton when we're TB testing. And as we got Lewis in, we noticed that he got a swollen penis. So we've got 007 that has a bad foot. We've got Paul, who's probably getting a bit tired out at Thornton. He's got a big group of cows out there. Um, he's seeming a bit lethargic, but I think that's probably because he's a bit worn out. Um, and then, yeah, Lewis has got a swollen penis, but we can't do anything about him because we've got the cattle crush out at Thornton. So we've got to get a TB test done today, bring the cattle crush back and put it up so we can get the vet to have a look at him. And hopefully it's nothing too bad, but <sighs> just seems the harder you try at the minute, the worse things get. So uh, <laughs> absolute, absolute nightmare. High of the week, however, is that the guys at Catley Engineering have worked their magic on the 6410 and I've got it back, so they've got that done in double quick time, which is uh, which is great, because I'm really thankful for that, because I do miss my little 6410 when it's not around. So yeah, thanks guys at Catley Engineering. Top work again. So this week's video is kind of a compilation of loads of different things. So there's things that we've done in the past, things we're recapping, things that we've built, um, things that we've broken. So yeah, settle in and I hope you enjoy it. We're just getting this big old mob of cows up into the pen for TB testing at Thornton. This is day three of four TB testing. Um, I think there's about 130, 140 here, something like that to do with the cows and the calves. And I thought I'd just point out this bit because what I'm running on right now is actually the part of the Thornton ground that a few weeks ago I mowed. So where those cows are there, the other side of that sort of grass strip, um, that bit was the bit I mowed in front of the cows to let them graze it. And this bit was a bit I just mowed um, anyway, because it was getting ahead of them. Now, I would argue that this has more regrowth than the part above that paddock that actually wasn't uh, mown at all. So, interestingly, yes, they did graze a fair chunk of it that we mowed in front of the cows, not all of it, but it has improved the regrowth. So, perhaps something to uh, take note of if you're thinking of trying to do something with all your benty long grasses. I'd, uh, I'd give them a mow or a top. I think you'd, you'd benefit from it. So I'm just going to show you how we've actually set up because I know I've not actually videoed uh, TB testing. We've just finished the day three of four. And yes, Keith, I am wearing a girl's vest. It's not actually a girl's vest. I just don't do my own shopping. We get the cows in there. We've been putting the hurdles out around that, the other side of the gate. So it gives us more pen space and we'll run them up. We've got them on a electric fence there. So they obey the electric fences because they're rotational grace all the time. So we run them up around the back of here, straight in. And we have the hurdles set up here. And then what we do once they're in there, we put these hurdles flat and link them round to that gate and then back this bale trailer that I'm stood on up the side of the bales just to provide a bit of a uh, bit of sturdiness and then walk them round and in and actually you know what it works really well considering it's a bit of a temporary setup um, but now 
Dad sounds like he's struggling, so I'm gonna go and help him put them cows back on the other side where they belong. So we've just bought the cows back and put them on a new paddock. Dad's just going to take the electric fence up from the old paddock that we bought them off of. This is, um, they've actually fenced this into sort of like two hectare paddocks. They're on here for two days. Um, there's more grass once you get up the top. A bit dry up here, it's very stony, so it doesn't, uh, doesn't grow massive amounts of grass, not as much as we get at home. But it's working all right, so I can't complain too much. Um, he said, maybe you guys would be interested in this because this is how we water the cows here. We actually use this spring and this is actually fully spring fed. There's no mains water here at all. But look at the amount of water that's coming out of this. That, that pipe's running at like half four, something like that. And considering how dry it's been, we've not had any decent rain. We had a decent rain the other weekend for a day. Um, but considering we've had no decent rain for a long time, that's insane. And even when we get really hot summers and dry summers, still runs like that. And when you get a wet winter, it is pouring, full bore of that pipe. And it goes through from out that hill somewhere, God knows where, comes out of there into this trough, and then it goes through that pipe, and it cuts through and goes out into a water trough that's the other side of that fence there to feed the field on the other side. And we just fence everything back to this water trough so that the, uh, the cows have always got some water. And it's so cold as well. You would not want to sit in there for too long. It is freezing. But yeah, I'd love to know where it actually comes from. Somewhere in there, I presume. But yeah, it's quite cool that. We ought to bottle it. We'd probably make more money from that than cows, but I like cows more than bottles. Actually, before I go home and get my dinner, I thought I would just show you this little invention because Dad made this for last week's TV test and I didn't show you it, so I should show you it now. But he's made a little hurdle for inside these gates in the cattle crush. For when we're doing calves, um, I'll show you some video. I'll put it up. But uh, yeah, it's really good. He's just made it fit because we used to put a sheep hurdle in here. And what we used to get was it used to slide forward and then get in the way of the neck trap so you couldn't shut the neck trap. But he's put these lugs on here so it sits inside and there's another lug down there and it sits inside the um the gate so you can still use the gate perfectly and you can have them open when you want to do calves and nothing can get out but it's really good it's, and you can actually put your hand through it and whatever else it works a treat because he did think about sheeting it at first and then decided not to and we're probably glad he didn't because the vet can actually get in there and use his clippers and his injections and stuff so yeah that is another really good invention that Dad's done. Yeah, so kudos to Dad. I've just got back to the yard, started blowing out all my radiators, ready to go mowing. And Les has just turned up with a berry stock. Look at this beast. Absolute machine. That is a serious weapon. Absolute unit. Although they do have a bit of trouble with those unimogs. It is so cool. So cool. I've just come down the field to mow. This is like the second cut of the grass lay. Um, it's a second year grass lay. So we would be doing third cut if it was a first year grass lay, but because it's second year, it's just not quite grown as well. And it's half decent. It's gone to seed a little bit. And oh, I've just dropped in and seen this. I broke it. Um, this little bit here snapped off. It goes up underneath that white cover. Uh, so I think we have to go back to the yard and... Uh, Weld that up. It's gonna be a hot job today because it's a hot day. But needs must. Gotta look after it. I also want to point out that I've engaged full on livestock farmer mode because I've kept my loader on, which I never do. I always take it off and put the weight block on, but I haven't because I've got a lot of loader work to do and I just can't be bothered to keep taking it on and off. So I don't know whether that makes me a proper livestock farmer now, but I've never done that before. So yeah, livestock farmer mode activated. So now I've come back into the yard. This is where it should attach. So that should have that on the end of it. So I'm gonna have to get the welder out, grind it all up and get it tidied up. And then uh, we can go back and mow. Probably not the best welding attire, but we'll do our best. Now, I wouldn't say it's as good as new, but it's better than it was 10 minutes ago, but I've noticed some of these other joints 
got plates over. I mean, they're not actually welded joint, but they've got plates on. So I might just cut a bit of flat plate if I can, find a bit and put it across the top of there um, just to reinforce it. That bit will do. Cut that off. Plenty thick enough. Should do the job. And there we go. Good, isn't it? I might just get some water on the wall and cannon to put on that before I start. I don't want to bomb fire my hands. I know if you're from Coon and you're watching this, you're going to be very impressed with that. So call me. If you need a new fabricator, I'm your man. Now, it seems to be holding up pretty well, but there's not mega amounts of grass on here, as you can see. It's pretty thin. If you look in there, you can probably tell as well. Because I think a lot of it is because it's so dry. Because This is ryegrass. And if you look at ryegrass roots, they only go down a couple of inches at the most. So when you've got wet, uh, dry weather like this, you're just going to suffer when you've got ryegrass. It's one reason why we're looking at more things like red clovers and herbal lays because they have a deeper root. You get grasses in there like Timothy and that that have a, a far deeper root. The red clover has more of a tap root. It's not really a tap root, but a far deeper penetrating root. And they can get moisture when it's so dry, which you just suffer with when you uh, when you have just ryegrasses like this. You get dry weather and it really starts to knock your yields. Now, you might be watching this video and wondering how far off our harvest is because we've got some winter barley just here that's not too far off, but it's still a bit green in the tram lines. Um, looks pretty decent though. There's about 24 acres or something altogether. Yeah, a bit green in the tram lines and on the corners and on the headlands. And there's a bit of a green patch you can't quite see at the top of there. But I think another week or 10 days and we'll be having a go in this. But our neighbors have got winter barley just to the side. It's the same variety, same seed. Um, but that was drilled probably 10 days or so earlier than this and they're going to start on Friday so the day this video comes out they're going to be kicking on which is quite exciting because we have the straw off them and it's uh, yeah means a big big shift we've got a lot of work to do a lot to get done so gonna be gonna be busy gonna be a busy weekend busy few weeks I think one way or another what with the wedding and everything there's gonna be a lot to fit in as well if you look here like there's some really good seed heads on this really big and long so It'll, hopefully this will yield really well it's not the thickest just here on the edge but as you get in there it's, it gets silly thick so i'm hoping to uh, get a good barn full now it probably doesn't come as a surprise to any of you who actually are regular viewers to this channel but i am not much of a tractor driver i really much prefer to be running around after some cows um but it is quite nice to be in here when the aircon is on but i do always quite enjoy getting the combine out now i've drove a combine since i was very very small um and it's always quite exciting but i am always ready to put it back in the shed though after a few days it, it really does wear off quite quickly um but yeah i'm looking forward to getting the combine out in that and doing a bit it's quite nice because the winter barley's ready nothing much else is anywhere near yet but we do have some really good looking winter wheat crops um, some good looking beans and oats so yeah one way or another quite excited to get harvest going now for something that really grinds my gears i just went around the field and look at that someone's birthday balloon i mean jesus christ stop letting your balloons go people look at that if that went into my cow would you kill them oh it drives me mad picking up balloons all the time i just can't believe that people haven't got it into their head considering how obsessed everyone seems to be over the environment right now that letting go of balloons is not a good idea come on guys wake up it's, it's so annoying like it, if this had been a a thick crop that'd be in the bottom and i wouldn't have known because it was in the bottom of there i didn't see it when it was in the grass i've only just seen it as i've come back round again and there's loads in here it could do so much damage so much damage it's just so frustrating it really annoys me i've just jumped off of the mower there because i'm in this last little triangle in the top corner 
and there's a pheasant in here, a hen pheasant that's got some chicks and the chicks are just running around. I'm gonna try and get her into one of these margins. I saw two chicks and the pheasant. The pheasant's over that bit now. And there's the pheasant, I can't see her chicks. Must be near somewhere. I can hear the chicks, I think they're over here somewhere by the mower. I can't actually spot them, but I can hear them. They're in here somewhere and the hen pheasant's just gone up into that cover there. So I'm gonna mow it from one side and hopefully I'll just keep pushing them out. Just go really steady, push them out towards the top. And uh, that's them all done. They actually scurried off into the top, which was quite nice to see. Um, but it was quite nice to see some chicks around in general because normally they end up getting washed out because I think mainly for grey partridge, Ascot week is the week they generally hatch. We actually had a grey partridge nest at the side of the drive and that's all hatched out now and they've disappeared. Um, so you used to see the grey partridge there all the time. She's all disappeared now and I imagine she's got over into the brook line, um, which is kind of the next hedge along from the drive because there's a lot of water there and as long as they get some water, especially with this heat, there's plenty of insects about, this should do quite well, which is quite nice to see really. And that is it for another video guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like and a subscribe and let me know how you're doing out of 10. Whatever you're doing this weekend, have a good one because it's tipped to be an absolute scorcher. We're supposed to be breaking the all time heat record for the UK on Monday or Tuesday next week, which is supposed to be like 40 degrees, which is mega. It's just unheard of in the UK. Stay hydrated, get yourself some electrolyte tablets because they'll help you out and enjoy it, whatever you're doing. See you on the other side, bye.